want to focus on that part there where it talks about redeeming the time. If you'll notice this is a parallel passage with Ephesians chapter 4, so we're going to go there in a second, but uh, it says redeeming the time. That's a phrase that we hear a couple times. Let me see. Ephesians chapter 5, let's go to verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. So, before I get started, I just want to talk about basically what this is talking about, redeeming the time. Uh, I want to make a reference to time management, and then we'll get into what is important in the Bible and what this context is talking about in both these passages, in Ephesians and in Colossians. But time management, and I noticed this, uh, I should say right off the bat, I am no expert in time management, okay? But here's what happens. When a lot is put onto your plate, you have to figure a way to deal with it, you know? When I was a kid, right? I had one thing, one responsibility, right? Do what mom and dad tell me to. I got my family, maybe friends, and that's the extent of it. So you learn how to juggle that. And even that's, if you're not coordinated, kind of hard for some people too, right? But you got one thing that you got to juggle. You get a little bit old, older, you got school, and you start working a job or something like that, right? So now you got two things to juggle. I know I'm probably going to end up messing this up here. <laughs> and so you learn how to juggle in the midst of, uh, of everything and uh, get a little bit older, something else is thrown at you. you got, now you got financial responsibilities, now you get a house, right? something falls apart, you gotta take care of that <laughs> and things get kind of rough, you know? So now you're juggling all this, that uh, you have to find a way to keep everything going, right? You say, can you juggle four? Probably not, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Somebody <laughs> throw something else on you, okay? You got church, you got all these things. Maybe now you have kids, right? So you got four things to juggle. I didn't think I could do it, but that's what I was with. <laughs> so, uh, and you learn how to do it. Are you an expert at time management? No, but when you got a lot that has to get done and you want and you have the motivation to do it, <laughs> you find a way to make make it happen. But the Bible talks about redeeming the time, and obviously. Well, let me just talk real quick about what redeeming means. Some might not know. This morning in Sunday school class, we looked at that word in Iola, and uh, I like kind of breaking down words and looking elsewhere in the Bible where you can find that word and in the context of just kind of comparing Scripture to Scripture. And basically what redeeming means, think about like the kinsman redeemer. The idea was somebody who had lost everything, lost their property, or maybe they died, and so... Uh, the wife that they left behind if a man died is you know now she's at a complete loss well a kinsman redeemer would be the next person closest to kin that would be able to basically buy that property so that it would still stay in the family name and even take on the responsibilities as a husband to the wife who's you know and that's a that's kind of a weird thing for us to think about today but that was written in the law of Moses greatest uh, story uh, example of that would be Ruth and Boaz, of course. And Boaz is the is a picture of the kinsman redeemer, which we know Christ is the redeemer. All right. So the idea of redeeming something is maybe either sometimes it's used to say buying something back. You know, I redeem that. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it already had value. And think about a coupon, right? A coupon is in your hand. It really doesn't have any value. They always put on the back of it like this. Actual value is like point zero 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 one cent or whatever it is. It doesn't really have any value, but when you cash that in and you redeem it, then it has value. So when we say 
Christ is our redeemer, what we're saying is that he's already paid, you know, the price to get us out of total loss and to, and to ransom us, right? And, and now we are uh, saved from loss, saved from destruction. So that's what we're talking about redeeming. So when he says redeeming the time, what we're saying is, in essence, we want to save that time. We want to uh, buy time, if you will, and be able to make the most out of the time that we have in the day. We live in a world, and I'm guilty of this myself sometimes, but a lot of things are just left undone, right? And then we say, I'm sorry, man, I just didn't have time to do that. And the act, and, and it, I mean, sometimes you might have a legitimate excuse, but I remember in school, man, I just didn't have time. I just got so much going on, didn't have time to get that report done. And my teacher would say, well, you've got just as many hours in a day as everybody else in the class does. And he's right. You know, there's not, but one person doesn't really have more time, do they? There's just more stuff like that goes on during the day. So you have to decide what's important and all that. And so I really believe that's what we're talking about. He's saying redeeming the time. Now, he's not talking about being, you know, more successful in business. Most people, when it comes to time management, you're thinking about like the CEO of a company, man. He's got a really tight schedule. I was reading about how certain CEOs have the same uh, type of a schedule minute by minute throughout each day as the president of the United States. And the president of the United States, their schedule, you can find uh, archives of that on the, uh, on the internet. And you see uh, basically minute by minute what their schedule's like. Now some of it's, you know, it's kind of a, a vague on, on what it says that they're doing, but their whole day is planned out every day so that they can get the amount of stuff accomplished that they get done each day. And a CEO, you think, man, well, of course they got to do that, man. They're the head of that company. They got to make sure, you know, that they're making the money and all that kind of stuff. But, but what's most important in this life, right? If a CEO has to do it, what makes his time any more valuable than anyone else's time, right? Just because of the responsibility. But there's a lot that maybe we can get done that we don't get done. <clears throat> it's we're not talking about having more family time. Although, based, by the way, our jobs are a necessity and it's an important responsibility that we each have, our family time is important. And interestingly, every, uh, uh, every list that I saw that was like an example of somebody's schedule of these big guys, CEOs of different companies, and even the, uh, I even looked at Barack Obama's schedule. I just wanted to know, like, did he really do anything? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot out there where people were trying to say that, he did so much more and Trump just sits around, lounges around all day and stuff like that. I doubt that's true. I think he's probably a busy man. But uh, anyway, it's just, that's just, you got to always take everything you read online with a grain of salt. But, uh, but here, uh, these guys are busy, but all, all of them said this. They had to plan in family time and they had to plan in exercise because they knew it was important for their body and to keep them going. So they had to find time to schedule these things. And you say, oh, come on, man, you don't have to schedule exercise. Yeah, it can be a, a very important part of uh, making sure everything's going and stuff like that. So, uh, so all these things are important and they have their place. Somebody says, maybe, I, oh, man, I only have so much time to live. I was reminded of this old country song, and I'm not promoting it. I can't even remember what it's called, but uh, he's basically talking to this man who was diagnosed with cancer. You might know what it is. Uh, the song was really popular for a while. He's diagnosed with cancer or something like that, and he knows he's only got so long to live. And so he asks him, what did you do? And the guy's saying, man, I really made the most of my time. You know what I did? I went skydiving. <laughs> I went Rocky Mountain climbing. And I rode a bowl, you know, and I did all this kind of stuff. And, and you're thinking, that's really the most important thing? Like, oh, man, I only have so, many, so long to live. I better get these things accomplished. He threw a couple things in there. Like, I decided to read the good book and... And he said a couple of little things, and, and maybe I talked sweeter to people or whatever. But I thought, man, as Christians, come on. I mean, if we knew we only had, you know, a couple months to live, how, how foolish would it be to say, man, I always wanted to go skydiving. I better hurry up and check out my bucket list and get, that, get all those things checked off. No, we know what's most important in this world. And we would say, you know what, it's, it's just fine if I never go. Maybe in the millennium I'll get to go skydiving. I don't know. <laughs> Those things aren't necessarily important. Now, at the same time, you got a hobby, you got something you like to do, you can fit that in your schedule. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying, as it comes to what's most important, what needs to get done, sometimes we need to realize that our time has to be planned out. 
There's nothing wrong with making plans. There's nothing wrong with uh, deciding what needs to be done, what's important. I like what Jesus said. Look at Luke 14. Luke 14. And this is a, little, a bit of a parable here, but... Also, just kind of wise words to consider. Luke 14, verse 28. Jesus says, and he's talking about discipleship, which is in essence what, I, what I'm talking about, all right? But, uh, but I think we can learn a lot as far as value in our own life, as far as time management goes. But it's going to help us as we consider what's most important, uh, which is serving the Lord. You know, we, we understand the cost of discipleship. And here's what he says to these guys about discipleship. He says, for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to build it lest happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold it begin to mock him and I've heard a lot of stories of that where somebody didn't plan very well they began this project and they got like halfway through and it was just an eyesore for the whole community as they're driving by to just kind of laugh at this person you know that didn't uh, didn't get the project done okay <clears throat> we won't talk about all the projects I haven't got done but <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king setteth not down first to consult whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh at him with 20,000? Or else while the other is yet great uh, way off, he sendeth an, uh, an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. Uh, anyway, so you get the idea here, whether it's war or whether it's a building project, whether it's running a country, whether it's being the CEO of a company, anything important that has to be done, who wouldn't in their right mind sit down and count the cost? Can I take this on? Can I schedule enough time in my day? Do I have enough money? Do I have enough resources to get this done? They're going to have to at least have that hope and that, that planned out. But as Christians, we also understand not everything's always going to go according to plan. And we have to rely on the Lord. But look, this Amen. is the thing. The Bible says, uh, seek ye first. Jesus said Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's got to be our main motivation. Amen. The main thing we're seeking is, is what is uh, pleasing to God. What Amen. is his will? What's going to bring him most glory? What's going to, uh, uh, you know, be eternal, you know, laying up treasures in heaven. Amen. And so, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But people almost read that sometimes and think like like uh, Jesus just walked around like a lazy like Rastafarian smoking marijuana or something like that. Like, oh, just man, just go with it. You know, just let. That's not how he was. Right, right. He had a busy schedule. Amen. And I would guarantee you, you look at some cases where there were multitudes and he's healing people and he's, uh, and he's, he's just wearing himself out all day long. He's doing all this. And then what does he do? Everybody else finally goes, hey, we need to go home and get some reps. We need to get something to eat. We need to take off. He goes up into a mountain and he prays, right? Those kinds of things need to be worked into somebody's schedule so that they can get more done. They say, you know, that's more important than other things I could be doing. You know, maybe even more important than sleep sometimes. Right. I want to show you real quick just because I think it would be helpful to you. And... Uh, it's kind of something I'm going through in my life trying to uh, work this out. And so it came up, and I thought it was kind of neat. You maybe have heard about it before, maybe learned about it in school or something. But here is one of the presidents, uh, Dwight Eisenhower, 34th president of the United States, came up with the Eisenhower box. Anybody ever heard of that? The Eisenhower box. Well, good. I thought I was going to feel real dumb. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, we learned that. That's old news. Okay. Here's the Eisenhower box. And this might help you a little uh, on considering some things. Okay, so here's how uh, Eisenhower just divided his time. He said some things are important and some things are not important. Some things are urgent and some things are not urgent. 
And he's quoted as saying, what is important is, se is seldom urgent. And what is urgent is seldom important. Okay? So here's how, what he would do. If something is important and it's urgent, okay, this needs to be done and it needs to be done now, somebody's waiting on it. You know, I've, I've got a paper I've got to, you know, deliver to somebody. I've got to, uh, you know, uh, somebody's just waiting on an answer, whatever. Like right now, I, I, I've got to be here preaching. I had to have a message ready to preach. That was urgent, okay? And it was important. So it's important and it's urgent. These are the things that we focus on doing throughout the day. All right, that's what we're doing. On a daily basis, we're just checking off, we're marking off the things on that list. These are the things I have to do. They're urgent and they're important. And maybe along the time, we can schedule some other things in there that aren't quite as urgent, okay? So they're important and they're not urgent. Here's where we're gonna decide. That's probably right. <laughs> Where we're going to decide uh, what when we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to have to put this in the list. Look, it's important. It needs to get done, but not necessarily today. Now, if you're like me, uh, I like getting things done. I like checking things off the list. I like accomplishing things. But a lot of times, they're the things that I want to accomplish, not necessarily the things that are really important, right? And I put them. I make them important, but they're not necessarily important. And uh, and so uh, some things. They're urgent, right? They kind of need to get done, but in the scheme of things, they're not really that important. So here's what we do, you know, especially if you have older kids, you delegate. <laughs> you find you find somebody else who can do this. Delegate, all right? And uh, you get somebody who can take care of some of those things, you know, make ske schedule certain things, or uh, I don't know. First thing I thought was iron clothes. I mean, I'm always like, if you iron my clothes, I don't have time. You schedule it. It's important. It needs to be done, but maybe you can find uh, somebody else. I mean, it's urgent. It needs to be done. Maybe you can find somebody else who can do it. Okay. Then the last thing is things that are not important and they're not urgent. What do you think we need to do with those? Delete. <laughs> Delete those. <laughs> we need to get them out of our life, right? Now, I'll, I'll tell you something here. I'm going I'm to give you a little, because uh, because if we live our life by that, and we actually eliminate the things in this area, and there's a bunch of them, man. Those are probably a big portion of what we do in a day, or like the average person does in a day. Things that could just be eliminated from our schedule altogether, okay? But I'm going to tell you a little shortcut, I mean a little secret. <clears throat> what you can do is find those things that you like to do that are in that list, and you can find a way to make them important. Right? For instance, right? I like to go running. Obviously, I want to work that in. Hey, it's important for my health and, and to get out there in nature and all that kind of stuff. And then I uh, recently wanted to mess around with uh, doing some video footage and all that kind of stuff. Not important, not urgent, but you know what I said? Hey, man, I really got to work on uh, uh, filming and, 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 and all this kind of stuff for upcoming things that we're doing. <laughs> so you understand what I'm saying? Things can move around to another list if you work them out to help you in other areas. Sometimes you can kill two birds with one stone and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, he lived his whole life by this little box right here, apparently. And I was thinking in my head, I was thinking, well, I, I want to take this box and break it down into the things in my life where I have relationships and responsibilities. Okay, number one, we've all got our relationship and our responsibility to God. He should be first. Okay, so we've got to make sure every day we've got time where we're reading the Bible. We got time uh, worked out throughout the week where we're doing some soul winning. We're doing things for the Lord. We're praying. We're doing those kinds of things. Another box would be my relationship and uh, responsibilities with my family, obviously. We've got family and uh, and certain things that we need to. The Bible says we, you know, we have to, or else we're worse than an infidel if we don't provide for our family and take care of them. Uh, even conversation and, and stuff like that, they need us. And so we need a uh, uh, plan for that. Then we have our church, right? Which I would say this, because someone said, well, what about friends? Well, I would say probably your church is going to be where your friends are, where it could be a lot of times where your family is. And, uh, and those, you know, we have responsibilities in the church. We all should be able to, have, you know, find something that's our responsibility, somewhere we can help out our church. And then uh, even with the relationships with one another, fellowship, time, and all that kind of stuff. And we need uh, that, and then we have 
uh, our relationship with our job. You know, now sometimes that's going to take up the biggest portion just because of uh, where, where, you know, we have to subject ourselves to our bosses and the hours that are necessary for us to earn the income we need to. But really, that's something that we need to do constantly learning, you know, to get better at our jobs and stuff like that so we can be more uh, effective. Maybe phone calls, maybe make all those things that we schedule. There's so much responsibility. It's like those, those balls that we're juggling. But, you know, a lot of them can be deleted. We don't need those in our life. We don't need those certain things. Or we can combine that with another thing, you know, to make uh, uh, make things in our lives a little bit more uh, effective, okay? So after we determine all that we need to get accomplished in the day, you know, these are all the things that need to get accomplished. Now, what are we talking about redeeming the time? What are some things that we have to do now with what we have? We, have all, we all have the same amount of time, 24 hours in a day, and we've got all these things on the schedule. Now, what are we going to do? Well, here's four different things we can do. Number one, three different things. We can find more hours in the day. Now, we, we all have 24 hours in the day, but if you sleep 10 hours, you know, and some people need more sleep than others. But if you sleep a certain amount of time, you know, obviously you have less working hours in the day. I found out uh, a long time ago, I was working, I was in Bible college. I had one child, I think one was on the way. I had uh, two jobs, at that time I think I had taken the semester off of college. I had two different jobs in Oklahoma City and uh, and on top of that I decided, you know what, I wanna take up ultra running. I had way too much on my plate. But here's the thing, when you wanna do something, you make time for it, you just do. And so I would get up, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning, go for a run, come back and do this and then do that. And I found out I was getting so much accomplished in one day because I had all these things on my schedule and I was like, everything has to have a place. And, all. and it was a crazy year in my life. And that was actually the first time and only time I've ever completed the 100 mile <laughs> ultra. But I got all those things accomplished. I was able to get that training in. I was able to, uh, to do the jobs, uh, try to be there for my family as much as I could. And, uh, and, and, you know, I got all these things done, but looking back, man, there's a whole lot of things I could have just cut out of there and a whole lot of more important things that I could have got accomplished during that time. So it's not just a matter of being busy, but it's about picking out what those things are most important. But look, if you got so much on your plate, some things can be, uh, you know, taken off of the schedule. You can find more working hours in a day. Uh, number two, you can improve your capacity to accomplish more during your working hours. At that same time in my life where I was uh, where I was ultra running, I was doing all this training, and I was just, I remember my just my everyday life, everything was just go, go, go. And I was thinking, I remember thinking, like, if I'm walking through a store, I know people would laugh at me if I was running, but just think hypothetically, if we ran everywhere we went instead of walking, how much more time would you <laughs> And I remember thinking, like, if I could just drive a little faster. I'm not saying do that, okay? I'm going to walk a little faster. I could just, you know, I was trying to think of all these ways to like get more done during the day. Hypothetically, right? That's true. You can get more accomplished. You improve your capacity to accomplish more things. That's going to happen if you're healthy. That's going to happen if you're more planned out and scheduled. If you had the proper nutrition during the day, all those things will help. And then the last is so important is eliminating non-important activities uh, during your working hours. Okay. Now again, in context, here's what we're talking about. What's the most important thing? Well, being a disciple of Christ. What is it that we're trying to get done? Well, we're trying to get the Father's business done. And it doesn't matter if I'm thinking about my own family. Christ, God is first. So my uh, time that I have with my family, what I get accomplished with my family, should be bringing them and, and myself, and, and it should be bringing us closer to God, and it should be pleasing to God. Uh, and the same thing with, my, uh, obviously, my situation is a little different with my job and with church and all that, but then I also have a side job and, and, and everything. So, but with all these things in the back of our mind is what I really need to make sure is that I'm getting done what's going to be pleasing to God, what's laying up treasures in heaven. That's discipleship. And so with uh, redeeming the time in the context, look at <clears throat> Colossians. And we're going to go back and forth between Colossians and Ephesians. Colossians 4, 2 again. And there's a lot of similarities in these uh, two passages. 
But the first of all, first thing I want to show you is this: time management is our responsibility. It's our responsibility. Colossians four two says, "Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving." All right, let's flip back to Ephesians five. Ephesians five verse six. Let, let no man deceive you with vain words. See, that's, that's your responsibility to make sure you're not deceived. Make sure no man deceives you. For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Okay, but uh, be ye not therefore partakers with them. All right, so you, you have the responsibility, time management, managing your time, uh, making sure you make the most out of it, making sure your motivation is there and all that. It's our responsibility. Uh, some people, like I said earlier, just go around life saying, man, I just didn't have time to do that. Uh, I just didn't get such and such done. I remember when I first was an assistant, uh, assistant pastor, uh, it was before my, I was working for my father-in-law and, you know, because of the relationship there, I think he kind of felt like, man, I don't want to just ride him and, and be like a, 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 a heavy taskmaster, you know? Uh, so I'm just going to give him a lot of freedom and all that. So, I mean, we, we got a lot accomplished and we worked together, but I remember looking back so many times where I would just waste an entire day. It's not that I wasn't staying busy, I was staying busy, but looking back, I'm like, man, I really wasn't accomplishing, you know, some of the more important things that I should have been accomplishing. And it's because uh, I had to take responsibility for myself. Now look, if you're leading some people and they're not getting the job done, you can give them the kit, you know, and you can speed things up. But ultimately, it's all going to be on us. We have to take responsibility to ourselves and say, hey, I've got to redeem the time. I've got to uh, manage my time and make the most out of it. Okay, that's going to separate the men from the boys. I mean, that's really going to uh, help you mature in your life when you start taking responsibility for the time that you have in the day. And of course, we all have 24 hours in the day, uh, but it's just what we do with it. <clears throat> it's up to us to find ways to get more accomplished. It's us, up to us to eliminate the non-essential activities and all that. Number two, time management takes diligent care and consistency. Back to Colossians 4. Colossians 4, verse 5 says, Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Right, and I think about that, this idea of just walking and wisdom, you know, how you gain wisdom. Wisdom usually takes a lot of time. It takes experience. It takes consistency of just doing something over and over, making yourself doing it, falling sometimes and getting back up and all. Uh, but it takes uh, diligence, okay, and it takes consistency. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 says almost the same thing, verse 15, Ephesians 5, 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. What's circumspectly? You think about a circumference, right, or a circle. And you think about somebody who's paying attention to everything that's going on around them, you know, circumspectly. And they're walking wise. They're not walking as fools. And they're trying to take, uh, uh, you know, care of every step that they take. And they're being conscious of the decisions that need to be made. They're walking circumspectly. And so we need to uh, manage, we need to be diligent and consistent in our daily walk with them. So, you know, so here's what's going to happen. Times in your life, you know, you're going to have a whole lot on your plate. You're going to have to find ways to manage it, and you're going to learn from that. Later on down the road, you know, you might kind of let some things slide and uh, maybe start spending, wasting more time than you used to, and then eventually you're going to have to come back around. And from experience, you can say, man, I got a whole lot more done whenever I, you know, actually sat down and planned my time, whenever I made sure that I was getting up and, and getting a little exercise to get the day going and, and uh, eating nutri nutritious food. And, and man, I got so much done. So we're going to learn from uh, our experience and we're going to be able to be wise and, and uh, we've got to be consistent and diligent in taking care of that. And then third of all, this time management requires... A motivator time management requires a motivator again when you're uh, having two jobs you know whether or not you're gonna pay the bills 
you know, always relying on these two jobs that you're doing, all of a sudden it becomes a priority in your life. <laughs> Am I right? When you have uh, another child and you're like, man, I got all this stuff. I got to make uh, more money to pay this uh, child off. I've got to, <laughs> I've got to uh, spend more time with them. I got to do all this. Guess what you do? You realize, man, I, this, now it's a priority. When you got, uh, you know, all of a sudden your preaching responsibility as a pastor goes from preaching just a couple messages a week to preaching like six times a week. You know, you're thinking, man, I, I've got to find more time to work and study. I've got to find more time to uh, to do these certain things, you know. I've, we've got to use our time wisely because we've got to drive. I'm just using my own personal experience to help out. Uh, to drive from Kansas, from Iowa to Kansas City and back, you know, a couple times a week. Well, how can I make the most out of that time, you know? we can Somebody makes sandwiches, and we can eat sandwiches on the way here. Uh, I can go over my notes. Uh, Sharice, I, I, we've got a little routine going where she tabs everything in my Bible for me, and, and I read, read the notes to her while I'm driving. I would have somebody else drive, and uh, and I would do my own notes. But if you don't know, I'm very uh, I get very car sick, so that wouldn't go so well. All right, but you see what I'm saying? Everyone's like I'm using my own personal experience, but every, all y'all's lives are a little bit different. But you've got the same amount of hours in the day. You've got your own responsibilities, and you've got to find ways to uh, uh, to fit all that in there. But it's all going to require a motivation. You know what is the motivator? I tell you what, when a guy uh, is engaged or, or you know, is, is looking towards getting married or something like that, he's usually like, man, I really got to get my life together. <laughs> I'm going to be taking care of somebody right here. So he's going to pick it up, you know, make sure he's got a job and make sure he's doing all these different things. Look, it's motivator. There's certain things that motivate us. But what should our motivation be as Christians in all things? We've already said it a few times. The kingdom of God is our motivator. Ephesians 5, 16, as we read, said the days are evil. Look at Ecclesiastes 12. We were talking about this here recently. Ecclesiastes 12. We see that phrase, a uh, similar phrase used. Somebody did Ecclesiastes 1 by 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I love how this one starts. <clears throat> Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou, sayest, uh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And it goes on to explain those evil days being when we get old. And there's things that we can't do anymore, like we used to be able to do. And, and whatever the evil days are, you know, there's a lot of things that come our way and they'll hinder us from doing all that we wanted to get accomplished. You know, all that we thought we were going to get accomplished when we when we were young, and we sat down and wrote all these things that we want to get accomplished. And we're like, man, something's going to come, and it's going to hinder that, and we're not going to be able to get it done. So the Bible says, uh, to remember the creator of the days of thy youth, all right? And this is this is Solomon as he, after he's spent a whole life, right? Now, not up until a certain point, when he got the kingdom, he was a pretty righteous man. But then he spends his whole life, he by his own testimony, thinking, man, everything in this life is just futile. I mean, it's just all vain, vexation of spirit. He was depressed. You know, he'd look and say, all these riches that I gained, I'm just going to die and somebody else is going to pick them up. And, 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 and all the kingdom that someone else is going to run this kingdom. And he started trying to find ways to please himself. And he, and he even started studying. He even studied madness. I don't know what that means, but he just like, <laughs> let me just be mad for a while and some drool coming down my face. I don't know what he, what he means by that. And he's like, he gave himself to all kinds of things, you know, good foods, even studied plants. And he studied like the names of all the trees, which I've always been interested in that kind of stuff. And he started doing all that, trying to find fulfillment in something. In the end, he says, man, all that is just vain, vexation right. of spirit. And so what does he say? He says, man, this is the whole conclusion of the whole matter. Verse 13 of, of chapter 12, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Uh, and then the Bible also says about the evil day uh, in Ephesians 6, 13, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So the idea is that we are all going to get to a place where we can't do as much as we used to do. 
Now, when I was 29 years old, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, man, if I could just run everywhere I was going, you know, if I could just get up earlier, if I could just get, you know, I could get more done during the day, well, guess what? You hit a time of life, and I'm already getting there. Can't run as fast as I used to run. I can't keep up with Brother Austin anymore. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't even hardly climb stairs anymore without grunting. And I hate it. I'm like, man, I'm too young for this. I should, I should be able to. Do but yeah, we're all going to hit that stage of life. It's not really. It should, shouldn't really be a surprise to us, right? But look, if I, if, even if I get to live into my 80s and I'm still being uh, productive, or 90s, or, or whatever it may be, right? I could, I, I could still get a lot accomplished. But look, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. I'm not guaranteed. I might not come down with some. Uh, cancer or something like that and only have a couple years to live or less than that you know the evil days could hit me really quick if I drive home this afternoon and we get in a wreck and die Amen. everything that I wanted to accomplish it come to a stop didn't it so we don't know how much time we have left but what we got to do is make the best out of our time that we can turn to John chapter 9 John chapter 9, verse 4. And Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is yet, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. You know, I think about this sometimes. All that Jesus got accomplished. Y'all know how old Jesus was when he died on the cross, don't you? 30, about 33 years old. Who's Who in this room is older than 33? Man, you guys are a lot of young. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the year that I hit 33, and I thought, I'm the age Jesus was whenever he died. And the next year, I was like, I'm a year older than Jesus was whenever he died. And I thought, that just put a lot of sense on, of urgency on my life. Like, what have I really accomplished Think of all that Jesus got accomplished. Now, his public ministry didn't start until he was around 30. So he had three years. And so when you read, and he's just going, and he's going, and he's going, and people are saying, man, you know, you need to eat something. And he's like, man, I got meat to eat that you know not of. And he just kept going. And he, you know, everyone else is sleeping, and they're wore out. And he goes up into a mountain, and he prays, and he's get re rejuvenated by prayer, you know. And, 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 he's, and he's just going about the business, and he says, I must be about my father's business. right? I must work the works. Of him that sent me while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. The evil days are coming. Our, you know, it's not just guaranteed. We just have unlimited time to work with. So it's time for us to get organized, get the most done that we can each day. I'm not saying you can't ever enjoy some time, but you better schedule that in <laughs> because there's work that needs to be done. Go ahead, if you would, in your songbook, man. Go in your song book to page 515. My, uh, my wife's grandpa was a missionary in El Salvador and in Mexico. And he's one of the busiest guys I know, man. He was always traveling. And I remember he would leave uh, Springfield, Missouri and travel to Mexico like in just one, he, no stops. He's like, we gotta go, let's go, load up, come on, we're going. And he was just constant, just nonstop. He would put, uh, he'd be having to buy new trucks like every year because he put so many miles on them. And he's knocking doors. I remember he'd come here, uh, which I thought he, I thought it was for a break. He'd come back to the states, you know, and had some business he had to deal with or whatever. I thought, hey, he's gonna rest for a couple days, you know. And I'd wake up by eight, nine o'clock, and hey, I wonder where uh, Brother Fight went. Look out the door, and he's walking down his neighbor's yard. Hey, how you doing? I just want to talk to you about the Lord. <laughs> I mean, just not, just go, go, go. And every time he'd write one of his missionary letters, he always signed it at the end. He, was, he said, "Night cometh." And that was kind of his little trademark, night cometh. And they got it from that verse that I read. Uh, he said, night cometh when no man can work. And so let's stand and, and sing uh, page 515. Great song. Work for the night is coming. 515. 